This is the Radiotity HF008 multi-band portable antenna. Is this something you need for your next Parks on the Air activation? Well, stick around and find out. You remember the Outbacker antenna? It was a popular base-loaded vertical antenna with taps along its side for each band. Unfortunately, it's no longer in production. But Radiotity HF008 shares uh, the same design with multiple taps along its coil to use on any amateur band uh, between 6 meters and to 80 meters. At the top of the antenna is an adjustable whip for tuning within the band. Now I'm calling this a portable antenna and not a mobile antenna, even though the HF008 is paired along with uh, the Radiotity triple magnet base, I feel like, you know, this is, is not up to the task of genuine mobile operation. Well that, and I've used the magnet base as mobile, and other than keeping a lightweight VHF whip stuck to the car, uh, they're pretty much useless for anything as substantial as uh, an antenna like this. Now, Radiotity did send me the HF008 antenna and their triple magnet mount base in exchange for a video. Now, my comments and experiences with it are my own and without any outside influence. So, let's take a deeper look at the HF008 antenna and the M916 triple magnet base. The magnet base consists of three powerful magnets in a triangle configuration with an SO239 or UHF female connection in the middle. Attached to the connector is approximately 13 feet of RG58 cable with a PL259 connector. The magnets themselves are 4 inches in diameter and they are quite strong. It takes a bit of force to remove the unit from a vehicle or other metal object. The base comes with three rubber boots to help protect your vehicle from scratches and an adapter is included to convert the PL259 to a BNC connection. The HF008 portable HF antenna covers eight different amateur radio bands between 80 and 6 meters. SWR is stated to be between 1.0 to 1 and 1.5 to 1 on the various bands. The antenna can be packed down to under 31 inches for truly portable operation. Weight is approximately 23 ounces. The HF008 comes in five pieces. The main coil unit, two whips, one 30.7 inches long and the other 22.4 inches long, and a 12.5 inch long whip extender and a jumper unit with banana plugs on each end. Also included is a small Allen key and instructions for tuning and adjusting the antenna. At the base of the antenna is a PL259 or UHF male connector. This screws into the SO239 on the magnet mount base. The PL259 can also be removed, exposing a 3 8 inch by 24 male thread that can be used for other mounting situations. I'll show you how to do that later in the video. No counterpoise or radio system is included with the antenna. It is intended to be operated from the magnet base, which uses your vehicle as a ground plane. But using an alternate mounting system, you can add a counterpoise if you choose. Well, enough of the specs. Let's take it out and put it on the air. So how do you tune in and adjust the Radiotity uh, HF008 uh, antenna? Oh Well, uh, to start off, uh, Radiotity does include this chart here with the antenna. And you can also get copies of this online on their website if you lose this sheet of paper. It has a, ch uh, it has a chart with all of the uh, various uh, points for the jumpers and uh, the whip length depending on which band you want to be on. I recommend making a couple copies of this, maybe laminating something that you can put in your kit because you certainly want to bring that with you. So first off, um, 80 through 6 meter support. So with the jumpers uh, completely removed from this antenna, you've got your full coil in action and it's going to operate on the 80 meter band. If I put one, uh, these, these points from uh, 1 to 9, operate um, each of the different bands so and um, I can and putting them in these pieces here I can bypass sections of the coil and move the resonance higher in the band so I would have uh, position number two for 40 30 20 17 15 uh, 12 10 and 6 meters I believe with the least amount of inductance 
Uh, it's a two-step process to tune this antenna. So first off, uh, we are going to select our band. So if I was going to do it the 40 meter band, I would put this in position number two. And then I would look on my sheet here and adjust the whip for 60 centimeters. So I would measure 60 centimeters from here to this point here. It comes with a little Allen key so I can uh, make the adjustment with my uh, whip for that. Now for 20 meters, uh, this part of the coil is bypassed uh, with the jumper and this part is active uh, level of in inductance in the coil. Uh, I can use my longer whip. I can remove the short whip here. You see our excess whip length, it fits into the extender here. So none of the excess whip actually goes into the coil itself, which is good. I, put, I can put my longer whip in, in its place. And I can make an adjustment for 20 meters. I should be at 88 centimeters. So I would use my Allen key, loosen this right here, extend the whip so that things are resonant. Now you're going to need to use uh, like, an, like uh, your SWR meter or your analyzer to make um, any fine adjustments. These numbers here for whip lengths I found are quite approximate. Uh, they vary in two regards. Number one, uh, with what kind of coupling you're going to get with your vehicle using the magnet base or whatever type of ground neck you're using. And uh, number two, uh, depending where on the frequency, you know, in the band you're going to operate. Uh, these are, <laughs> these uh, numbers, these values are for the bottom of the band. So if you can operate in the higher in the band, you're probably going to end up being shorter than what you expect. And uh, you do the same thing for the uh, other bands uh, in using this antenna. So a two-step process, adjust the taps depending on the level of inductance you need, and then tune the whip for the frequency you're going to operate within uh, the band taps that you've, you've selected. CQ, CQ, parks on the air, CQ, parks on the air, KB9, VBR, Kilo, Bravo, Niner, Victor, Bravo, Romeo, calling CQ for parks on the air. Kilo, Bravo, 4, Lima, Oscar, Alpha. Kilo, Bravo, 4, Lima, Oscar, Alpha, gotcha, 5, 7, here in the U.S., 10054, back to you. Roger, Roger, 57, 4, Brock, November, Charlie, thank you so much for another one in 73. All right, hey, thanks for North Carolina today. You too, you have a great day in 73. This is KB9VBR, Parks on the Air, QRZ. Alpha, 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 Victor Alpha 3, Foxtrot Echo Romeo. Victor Alpha 3, Foxtrot Echo Romeo. Gotcha 57, US 10054. Back to you. Yeah, Roger 57. Yeah, you're about a 57 and dropped out to a 53, so we'll say 5 and 5 average. Over. Yep, Roger that. Uh, band's a little up and down this afternoon, so, but uh, thanks a lot for the contact today. Yeah, thanks as well for the contact. Back up to 5773. You too. Yeah, you're, you've are you been a strong 57 all along, so um, you have a great day, 73. This is KV9 VBR, Parks on the Air, QRZ. Victor Alpha 3, Echo 7, Charlie, Lima, Quebec. Victor Echo 7, Charlie, Lima, Quebec, gotcha. 57, US 10054. Back to you. I got you a 5-5, five, five, Vancouver Island, British Columbia. All right. Well, hey, thanks a lot for Vancouver Island. Uh, greatly appreciated. You have a great day in 7-3. 73. 73. Take care. <laughs> Kilo Echo 8, Mike Alpha Lima. Gotcha. 5-5, uh, five, five, US 10054. Back to you. Uh, 
QSL, I have you 5 by 8 5 by 8 8 into Michigan. Mike India, QSL. All right. Well, thanks a lot for Michigan today. Greatly appreciated. You have a great day in 7-3. 73, thanks for the activation. Kilo 8, Charlie Alpha Romeo. Kilo 8, Charlie Alpha Romeo 57, US 10054. Back to you. Roger, Roger. You are a solid 59, excellent signal. Name is Ralph, state of Michigan. Back to you. All right, Ralph. Name here is Michael. Yeah, we're sitting here in Wisconsin, so the skip is super short today. Uh, thanks a lot for the Michigan. Uh, take care, my friend. K H C A R. <laughs> you too. Take it easy. Kilo Bravo Niner, Victor Bravo Romeo, parks on the air, QRZ. Kilo, Kilo 4, Mike Bravo. Bravo. Alpha Foxtrot. I don't think I'm going to do an on air test of 40 meters. Uh, with this antenna and I'm going to show you why. Uh, I just got done adjusting it and the I got the shortened whip and its extender down as about as low as I can get it and um, it is tuning down into the extra portion of the 40 meter band in phone operation. I could get this adjusted down at the bottom of 40 meters for like data or CW no problem but um, uh, for a phone, it's not gonna, not really, not gonna fly. Uh, just to kind of give you an idea of its two-to-one bandwidth here, at 7120, I'm at two-to-one, and then as I push up the band at 7170, I'm at 2.1 to one. So on the 40-meter band, this has approximately 50 kilohertz of bandwidth. Um, not a whole lot. <laughs> uh, so it's um, you really got to uh, tweak, you really got to pick and choose where you're going to be operating uh, with this with this antenna. Uh, so but we're able to get it at least to get it adjusted to that band. Um, not much whip, a lot of coil there. But that's about it. So um, Otherwise, it works well on 20 meters. No problems there, and I'm, I'm sure it's on the, on the upper bands too. Shouldn't have any problem getting good matches there. So we're gonna pat, we're gonna head on home, and I'll tell you a little bit more about this antenna. What do I think about the Radiotity HF008 HF portable antenna and the M916 magnet base? Well, for starters, it's certainly inexpensive. Uh, the antenna itself is under $99, which isn't terrible. Performance is average, and what I would expect out of a base-loaded antenna with such a short whip. Um, it may be equal to slightly less uh, in performance to an HF stick style antenna. Uh, once you get your whip lengths dialed in though, you know, setup will be reasonably fast. And it all packs down into a relatively small container. The entire antenna disassembled is under 31 inches, so you could easily travel with it. Power handling capability is good. With up to 200 watts uh, sideband, 100 watts CW, I probably wouldn't punch much more than uh, 50 watts digital into it though. On-air performance was decent. I uh, used this antenna on the 20 meter band and received good signal reports. I was giving uh, reports about equal to what I was receiving, so that's a good sign. Um, now considering band conditions weren't the best, uh, 20 meters was relatively short for me that day, <laughs> but I was still able to pick up uh, 33 contacts in about a half hour with this antenna. I wanted to test it on the 40 meter band, but uh, couldn't get a good match with this antenna into the phone portion of the 40 meter band. Which brings me to the downsides of this antenna. Well, first off, tuning is putsy. You know, it's not plug and play like you would think, uh, moving the taps and instantly switching to another band. But instead, after you move the taps, you still have to adjust the whip lengths. It does come with two whips, a longer one and a shorter one. So you could pre-tune, you know, both of the whips and uh, sw switch between two bands effortlessly like that. 
but then now you've you've switched you know you've you've kind of uh, turned your 10 band antenna in, into a two band antenna the other significant thing is low band support 40 and 80 meters are just about impossible with this antenna for both those bands uh, this antenna tunes to the bottom of the band which is okay for cw and digital operation but you can't do 40 meter phone unless you're going to actually physically cut one of these whips uh, it's just too long well Technically, it works in the extra class portion of the 40 meter band, but SWR is too high for anything above uh, 7200 kilohertz. If you're thinking about this antenna, please consider that it is only going to be useful on 20 meters and above, and 40 meters and below is pretty much limited. Now to counter that, Radiotity is building products for a global market, and frequency ranges are different in other ITU regions. I'm coming at this from the perspective of a Region 2 operator based in the United States. Fit and finish of this antenna and the magnet base is average. Uh, there's a certain amount of slop in the connectors at the base. Um, so it does look a little bit crooked when it sits on my vehicle. Uh, the gasket here just doesn't quite line up right. Uh, the rubber booties on the magnet base uh, they're, they're pretty much useless. They constantly slip off. If you remove the booties, you do get a better uh, vehicle coupling um, for, your, for your ground network, but then you're also gonna scratch your paint. So it's your choice. If I wanted to improve this antenna, here's what I would do. First, skip the magnet base. I'll remove this PL259 connector at the base of the antenna and mount it directly to a 3 8 uh, by 24 receiver. I got one here on my uh, jaw clamp uh, and um, then you can use, you can mount this to just about anything. Uh, you're going to get a better ground connection. Put it on a tripod and use an elevated radial as a counterpoise. I think that you're really going to dial things in uh, doing that. So who is this antenna good for? Well, if you're looking for a travel antenna with good operation on 20 meters and above, I could recommend this. If you like low band CW and digital, this antenna will work for you. If you want something you can throw on the roof of your car and don't want to travel with a bunch of ham sticks, well then check this one out. But otherwise, I'd probably pass. Now I am planning on some, uh, hitting some national wildlife refuges this summer and fall, and those places require you to be as self-contained as possible. I'd probably use an antenna like this that I can quickly throw up on uh, the roof of my car and just be ready to operate. Well, thank you Radiotity for uh, supplying the HF008 uh, uh, portable HF antenna and their magnet base for this review. Uh, there's a link down in the video description if you're interested in this antenna. Uh, do you have any questions about the HF008? Well, leave them down below. I'll try to answer as many as I can. Uh, but I'm Michael, KB9VBR. You have a great day and 7-3.